Take your mind apart to change the oil. It's got this rotating cam here. You can see it's slightly different uh, shape. So a horizontal cam on the uh, cam on the engine shaft spins around and round eccentrically, and it hits these pistons here on the pump. This is the other half of it. I've just connected this one to water, so you can get a good idea. And then, if you push the pump piston. Sucks it in water. You can tell if it's spinning around, hitting all those three all at once, creates loads of pressure. I've taken out one of the pistons, take apart this as well, but inside there's a load of uh, one way valves. So when the piston goes in, it pushes the water. The water can't be compressed, so it gets forced through the one-way valve into chambers. It works a bit like a human heart, I guess. So here's the contents of the heart. It's got these one-way valves. There's another one that was on this one. They have a little piece of plastic on a spring loaded. Here's a diagram of the left-hand casting that I drew to get my hand, head around how it was working. Um, the flow is in blue, it comes in through this inlet pipe from the hose, it goes into these series of three uh, channels before the one-way valves, and then each of these pistons, which are slightly out of phase of each other, are sucking that water through the one-way valve into the chamber here, on the other side of the casting. Uh, the piston then comes down and forces the water through another set of one-way valves up on top, the little manifold thing. Um, and then through that one-way valve and then straight back out the outlet. So, and for a while it took me, took me a while to figure out why there were sort of three chambers. I thought it was going through the whole thing. But no, it's just because that will give you a more consistent pressure um, and maximise each revolution of the engine. So you've got three pistons. Um, each of these chambers is going to be filling up at a different stroke um, so that the pressure is not just squirting well once every revolution it's three times. Part of the reason I took the thing apart in the first place um, is because it was dripping down out of here it turns out that's a normal feature so the piston chambers um, at the top of the collar um, top of the uh, pull stroke so bottom dead center um, there's actually a little gap so that the water can escape and you don't end up with a water lock um, because the piston, I mean, the, sorry, the water obviously can't be compressed. So if there's too much water in these chambers then the uh, pistons are just going to have a bad time and kill the engine. Um, so yeah, if you're not using the pressure washer, so you haven't got the valve open, the uh, lance on, then the excess water is going to drain out of these uh, chambers. And then secondly as well, you've also got a pressure release inside these one-way valves because once it's in these one-way valves, it's not going to be able to go out of these chambers. Um, so this is a little sprung-loaded plastic thing at the top you see coming out. Uh, and that's a pressure, well it's calibrated so that when, if too much pressure builds up in these one-way valves, then it'll spring down and open up and then it also drains out of this, this drip thing. Uh, so that's why they drip when you're not using the lance or when there's too much pressure going into the thing. So I've cleaned out all the chambers, got rid of any of the calcium buildups and mud and crap, sealed it all back together, the casing and all that. It all still works. As you can hear. And this is the oil that came out of it. Not a pretty state. While I was doing the change, excluding the parsley. So now I'm going to fill it back in with a bit of four-stroke engine oil.